Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 2014 American post-apocalyptic film called The Last Survivors. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. The movie is set in a small valley of Oregon in the near future. After 10 years without rain, the valley has turned into a dry wasteland. To survive, people have to locate enough water and try to avoid hostile scavengers. We are then introduced to Kindle, who is taking water from a pump hidden in her barn as she is cautiously watching around it. Later on, she grabs her rifle and goes out. When Kendall approaches an abandoned house nearby, she finds a truck and quickly sneaks a distributor cap out. Getting back home, she shows Dean, her frail orphan fellow, the distributor cap she found. However, Dean tells her that the cap doesn't fit the Cessna, which they plan to use to leave the valley. Later on, as the duo fall asleep, a breaking sound downstairs suddenly wakes them up. Then, they are relieved after learning that it is just some survivors wandering around in search of water. The next day, when Kendall comes downstairs, she finds a woman who is in bad shape. As Kendall generously gives her some water, the woman reveals to her that the survivors are being hunted down. She also adds that if Kendall stays put, she will be killed as well. At this point, Kendall tells the woman to go north because it is safer there. Before the woman leaves, Kendall hands her the bottle of water and a knife. The next scene, we can see Kendall is meeting Gabriel, who informs her about a car wreck that she could find distributor cap outside the pumping field. He asks Kendall to join his family, but she walks away as she refuses to leave Dean behind. Later on, Kendall goes to the car wreck that Gabriel told her about. As she reaches the pumping field and hides in a bush, some men with trucks come and take a huge load of water from the well. At night, when Kendall is back home with Dean again, she reminisces about the past when it was still raining and they still had water to live on. Moments later, via the radio, the duo hear a voice of a woman in a nearby farm calling for help. Worrying for the safety of the poor woman, Kendall rushes to the farm. When Kendall reaches the farm and hides in a corner, two other men also approach in another direction. Thinking that they are the scavengers, she aims at them and is about to shoot. However, the two men suddenly get shot by someone else. It turns out that she is not the only one who rushed to the farm. In a matter of time, Kendall spots two other masked men holding rifles right behind her. Some other men also show up from afar, grabbing other survivors. When Kendall enters the house to get away from their sight, she is terrified after finding out that this is a trap. A marauder orders the woman to call every survivor in the area to come, so they kill them all. When the woman tries to warn the others, she and the remaining family member gets killed brutally. Just then, the marauders start to search the house. At this point, Kendall has no other choice but to hide in the kitchen in the dark. While Kendall is hiding, a man shows up in the kitchen, telling his henchmen to search and kill everyone in the area who is taking water from his source. When the marauders are all gone, Kendall leaves and passes by a house of a young boy named Albie. She persuades him to come with her, but the little boy refuses to. He believes he is safer being on his own. Later on, she reaches home and finds out that her pump doesn't feel any more water. Dean suggests Kendall leave without him as his kidney failure has gotten worse. However, Kendall says she'll never abandon him no matter what. That night via the radio, the duo learns that Gabriel's family is contacting Carson, who offers everyone in the valley to come and join him in his compound, which he advertises as a safe haven. Hoping that Carson's offer could save Dean, Kendall leaves the house and heads to Gabriel's family to learn more about the compound. As she reaches Gabriel's place, his grandparents are burying one member of the family along with a katana. They ask Kendall to join Carson as he can provide medicine to help Dean. However, Kendall remains skeptical and tells them that she will go north with Dean. Later on, as Carson shows up with his men, Kendall quickly hides inside Gabriel's house. The family thanks Carson for coming and taking them as refugees. However, Carson abruptly kills everyone in the family but Gabriel. Seeing Gabriel's terrified, Carson eases him down, saying that the old people will have no use in the compound. Gabriel reluctantly agrees to join Carson. When Carson asks him how many more people are hiding, Gabriel reveals that there is one more. Hearing that, Kendall decides to run away through the window of the house. She then overhears a conversation between Carson and his daughter, Brooke. 
His purpose is to kill everyone in the valley, to take over their land and water. Meanwhile, Carson's men get inside the house and gas it. One of Gabriel's relatives gets out of the house, but Brooke catches and kills him. Carson and his people leave the scene right after that. Kendall manages to escape from the house through the roof. On the way home, she encounters a masked sentry of Carson. Kendall quickly points a rifle at him and is about to shoot, but he hits her with a stone. Being dragged away, Kendall grabs her axe and kills him before he can hurt her. Moments later, she reaches home and finds out that the pump is slow. Dean proposes a theory that Carson's compound might drain the aquifer and take the water right out from under them. They will control the whole valley if they have all the water from it. Dean thinks it might be a good idea to go to Carson's camp. However, after revealing everything Carson did, she tells Dean that Carson has been doing all the killing to those he first welcomed to his haven. The next day, we can see Kendall and Dean are sitting in front of their house and sharing some canned peaches. Now, knowing that his life won't last long, Dean asks Kendall to burn his body after he dies. Kendall reluctantly agrees, but is still determined to bring both of them out of the valley before Dean's deadline. After bringing Dean back to the house, Kendall encounters one of Carson's men guarding the entrance and quickly hides behind the wall. Broken Carson along with his lieutenant, a man in priest garb, are standing outside of the house. As they suspect that someone is inside, they decide to search and gas it. Kendall and Dean manage to escape and survive. As Carson is leaving, Brooke finds the lid of the canned peach and recognizes the window of the house. Later, Kendall rushes to the car wreck near Carson's place to look for the distributor cap because it is the only hope to get away from the valley. When Kendall reaches the compound, she tries to find a way to break in. Suddenly, a sentry approaches her from behind and attacks her. She manages to kill him before he can shoot at her. After that, Kendall goes back and reaches Albie's place. Here, the young boy tells her not to visit him so often, as it draws Carson's attention and puts Albie in danger. The next day, Kendall sees some vagrants who are in bad shape wandering into their house. She gets upstairs to find Dean supposing that it may be another of Carson's traps. Dean decides to offer those vagrants some water while staying cautious. They get out of the house and confront the vagrants. Kendall learns that they are actually the survivors on the way, heading north after a hunt of Carson. Kendall then walks them to the tower near the house and gives them a flask of water. The group asks her to join them, then go away. Getting back to Dean, Kendall reveals to him that the pump is dry and they only have water to survive one more week. Now, Kendall needs to get to the car wreck outside the compound gates and find a proper distributor cap. However, there is no way to get close to the gate without Carson's men spotting her. Dean thinks of an idea. As Carson dumps the waste oil outside of the compound, Kendall uses the slingshot and tries to set the gate on fire to distract the sentries. In the meantime, she approaches the car wreck outside the gate and sneaks the distributor cap out. Now we can see Kendall rushes home happily as she has found the right distributor. If everything is on track, Kendall and Dean will bring Albie to get away from the valley by the Cessna that is stored in Albie's place. To prepare for the trip, Kendall walks to the pump to take all the water in the tank. All of a sudden, the three previous vagrants come back and hit her unconscious. When she wakes up and finds herself strained up, all three of them are drinking her water and are about to kill her. Dean shows up and kills two of the vagrants. The last one manages to push Dean to the ground, but Dean kills him at the last second. The gunshots draw Carson's attention. As Carson and his people appear, Dean puts Kendall in a car and tells her to stay quiet. He goes outside and confronts Carson's men by himself. Dean lies to them that he and the three dead men were fighting over the remaining water and he is on his own now. As Brooke is going inside the house to check, Carson and his lieutenant are standing with Dean. Meanwhile, Kendall is in the car trying to untie herself. After realizing that the house is empty, Carson's gang decide to check for the barn where Kendall is. Dean immediately shoots and kills some of Carson's sentries. Carson and Brooke pull the trigger at Dean after that. Seeing Carson coming to the barn, Kendall covers herself with a blanket. As there is no suspect, Carson decides to leave with Brooke and lets his lieutenant remain at the house. Kendall manages to reach Gabriel's old house. Here, she has some water and retrieves the katana from the grave. Upon getting back to her house, Kendall swiftly kills Carson's lieutenant for revenge. 
She enters the house to find two other masked sentries and kills them both. She uncovers their masks and is horrified as one of them is Gabriel. Later that day, she brings Dean's body into the house and sets it on fire, fulfilling his will. The next day, she rushes to Albie's place and is happy as the distributor cap fits the Cessna. However, she learns that Albie has been kidnapped by Carson. To save him, Kendall rushes to the compound and manages to break in through the waste oil. Once inside, she kills all Carson's men just before Carson and Brooke show up. Before Carson can reach his gun, Kendall fires two shots at him and Brooke, but they are injured. However, as she wants to finish them both, the rifle is out of bullets. Carson states that what he has been doing is for a greater good and reveals that he wants Brooke to inherit his legacy. Now we see Carson takes a sword and charges at Kendall. Kendall fights back and kills Carson easily. Brooke grabs the sword and tries to kill Kendall. While fighting, Brooke tries to choke Kendall, but Kendall pushes Brooke back and stabs her with the katana. As the movie ends, we can see Kendall leads Albie to the Cessna and ignites it to go away. When Albie asks about Dean, Kendall tells the young boy that Dean is staying behind. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.